Hi everyone, my name is Abby and me and my group members Chris, Sebastian and Andrew modeled COVID positivity rates at US college campuses for our project. So we're going to walk you through that. Here's a quick presentation outline. We're going to go through the motivation for our project, choosing features and response, building our data set. And then Chris will talk about the visualization of our data. Andrew will talk about uh, running the machine learning models. And then Sebastian will talk about our conclusion and some improvements that we hope to make. So school administrators had to face decisions unlike any they'd ever faced before because of COVID. In August, schools found themselves with conflicting interests. They want to, of course, reduce COVID incidents as much as possible, but they also don't want to lose that face-to-face -face element of education. But most importantly, they, they also had an interest in not losing revenue. So the motivation here is, in light of these decisions, how many cases did each school end up having? And how did each school administrator's decisions, as well as their campus's environmental factors, influence COVID incidents on their campuses? So we're hoping that our model will help school administrators make more informed decisions about this in the future. The features that we use in our model were, first of all, teaching modality. That's a categorical variable with three levels. And we took it from August 31st to kind of get that teaching modality that schools settled on right before the fall term started. And then the following two features are state mask mandate, and positive cases in state. And so those are more environmental factors. You know, did the state uh, that the college is in have a mask mandate in place um, kind of two weeks right before the beginning of the fall term? And how many cases were there in the state um, uh, right before the beginning of the fall term? For our response variable, we are measuring the number of COVID cases at each college campus per 100 students. So that kind of gives us a um, you know, a number of COVID cases relative to the size of each school. And we took that from September 15th to indicate, um, you know, that those COVID numbers right after the fall term started. And the algorithms that we will be running will obviously be regressors, and we're going to run the KNN and decision tree algorithms. And then for each of those models, we're going to run um, an analysis of feature importance. To build the data set, um, we combined um, a few different data sets and ended up with about 1,100 um, different schools. And so most of the variables here are self-explanatory. Um, mask mandate is binary, it's either yes or no. And then in-person versus hybrid is a little harder to understand, but basically we had three levels. It was a categorical variable. If it's zero, zero here, then um, that means that it was online. If it's zero one, it was hybrid. And if it's one zero, that means that it was in person. Hey everyone, my name is Christopher Kodatsky and I led the data analysis for our project. So right off the bat, we figured that it would be a good idea to normalize our response variable based on the number of students who are attending each university. Um, obviously, 100 COVID cases at a school with an enrollment of 1,000 is a lot different than 100 cases at UW-Madison, for instance. Um, so we ended up transforming our response variable from total cases on September 15th into per capita cases on September 15th. Um, and you can see here, I made, I made a graph before doing that of just the enrollment of the colleges versus the number of cases on September 15th. Um, and you can see, as you'd expect, there's kind of a positive trend where um, schools with more uh, total students obviously tend to have um, more COVID cases. So what I did next is I wrote a script to get the latitude and the longitude of each university so that we could map the points out and get kind of a geographic representation of the data. Um, and this, this visualization is kind of just good for seeing some regional trends, like you can see in the south and the southeast, there are some schools that got hit really hard with COVID, like University of Georgia and University of South Carolina. What I think is really interesting is when you start to group colleges based on the measures that they put in place to counteract the spread of COVID. Um, you can see here I made a graph um, with the county cases per 100,000 residents along the x-axis and the college per capita cases um, on September 15th along the y-axis. Um, and this is data which you'd, you'd expect there to be a positive correlation for, like you'd expect the more um, cases there were in the county, the more spread there'd be at the university once, once students come back. Um, but at first glance, it doesn't really, like this seems like kind of like a negative correlation when you look at this. Um, so, but I mean, there's obviously a lot of outliers here and I think if you if you zoom in on the graph and to, to exclude the outliers, um, you see a bit more of a positive correlation, which 
Um, indeed, when you when you calculate it quantitatively, there is a positive correlation between the um, number of cases in the county uh, per 100,000 residents and the per capita cases at the college. Um, but then the next thing I did was I um, plotted out basically like a histogram and a box and whisker plot of um, the per capita cases broken down by different plans which were put in place. And mm -hmm. I think this really highlights the differences in outcomes um, between different plans of action when it comes to COVID. Um, like here you can see colleges that returned and went fully in person um, have a much higher uh, per capita COVID rate than colleges which went fully online, for instance. Um, I think the, the box and whisker plot up above does a better job of representing that than the histogram down below. But um, basically the long and short of it is that colleges that decided to come back fully in person have a, had a per capita COVID rate on September 15th of over four times that of colleges who decided to go fully online. Um, and in the next graph, it's kind, it's kind of it's a similar plot here where I'm looking at um, whether or not a mask mandate was put in place in grouping colleges based on that. And you can see once again that colleges in areas where there was not a mask mandate in place clearly have a much had a much higher rate of COVID per capita on September 15th in areas uh, which did enact a mask mandate. Um, so with that being said, I'll pass it off to Andrew, who led the modeling and machine learning portion of our project. For our modeling, we chose to use a k-nearest neighbors regressor and a decision tree regressor. For the KNN algorithm, we started off by using a grid search to identify the optimal hyperparameters, which turned out to be a k-value of 40 and a uniform weighting of points in each neighborhood. We fit our model using a training data set and then made predictions on a test data set. The root mean square error was about 1.17, which is fairly high, indicating that this model might not have been the best fit. The same process was repeated with our decision tree algorithm. The grid search indicated that the optimal hyperparameters were using MSE to measure the quality of splits and a max tree depth of four. After fitting the model using a training set and making predictions on a test set, the root mean square error was about 1.14, which was just slightly lower than the error for our KNN algorithm. Here's just a visualization of our decision tree algorithm that shows what splitting decisions were made at each node. Another thing we can glean from our models is feature importance. As you can see from the plots, feature one, which was the number of cases in each school's county per capita, was the main driver of our KNN algorithm. In contrast, features two, three, and four, which were whether a county in which the school was located had a mask mandate, the state's COVID positivity rate in which the school was located, and the effect of having in-person classes compared to online classes were the main drivers of our decision tree algorithm. And finally, I'd like to conclude this presentation um, with some of our key findings. So first, we can finally conclude with the most important features. When looking at the decision tree model, we were able to conclude that both mass mandate and state positivity rates provide the most information on college campus positivity rates. Now, this isn't to say that the other features such as teaching modality, um, as well as the county positivity rates um, did not provide as much information uh, to the machine. Uh, we're just saying that mass mandate and state positivity rates provided the most. And then we also wanted to conclude and to reiterate that neither model was really perfect in a sense. Um, when evaluating the accuracy of both the KNN and decision tree models, neither one had a, spe a particularly specific um, good uh, spectacular MSC metric. So we may need to look for more model options. And finally, I also want to talk about how we can improve our model. So uh, one of the first things we want to do is a deep dive into the teaching modality, since this will be a big decision for school administrators coming up, uh, especially for spring 2021. Um, we would like to dive, this feature, dive into this feature a little bit more. And then we still need to figure out the best way to cross validate our model. And since we're dealing with a data set we created our own, um, we possibly need to include a benchmark data set that we can um, assess our best model on. Um, and we'll be doing that uh, very soon. And then finally, since KNN and decision tree models had a relatively high MSC again, we would like to assess other models on our data. 
up. But among all, it, this was a very fun project to do. Um, it definitely challenged our group, but we were glad to do it because it was very, very relevant. So uh, I would like to open up the floor for any questions.